Nearly 20 years ago, Cadillac took their very popular and brand new CTS sports sedan and turned it into the CTS V and fortifying it with the same small block V8 from the Chevrolet Corvette. Now, it was an instant hit for enthusiasts. Now, unfortunately for the CTS V, over the years it got larger, more powerful, and it also lost its lovely six speed manual transmission in the process. Now, that brings us to the current generation. It's also been renamed the CT5 as opposed to CTS. And just like its first generation model, it uses a lot of componentry from the Corvette. In this case, the Chevrolet Corvette Z06 and ZR1, where we now have a supercharged 6.2 liter V8. And as a nod to enthusiasts, you can now buy this thing, a V8 rear wheel drive manual luxury sports sedan with a six speed manual transmission. So you guys have known that the world is kind of going towards self-driving and electrification. And what Cadillac has here with the CT5 V Blackwing is essentially a nod to enthusiasts. So as you can see this week, I'm testing out this beautiful, bright, electric blue CT5 V Blackwing with a six speed manual transmission. We're gonna live with the car on a daily basis. And at the end of this review, I'm gonna find out if you guys are in the market for something like this, should you be racing over to your Cadillac dealer to leave a deposit for one of these vehicles? Stay tuned to find out. Now, before we talk about the styling changes of the CT5V versus a regular CT5, I wanna remind you guys about the monster that's powering this vehicle under the hood. Now, you guys should be pretty familiar with this engine if you know Performance General Motors vehicles. This is the company's LT4, a 6.2 liter, uh, supercharged small block V8 with direct injection. It's a push rod V8 engine. Uh, it has a big fat Eaton blower that puts out nearly 20 PSI of boost uh, to this engine. And it makes 668 horsepower and 659 pound feet of torque. That's about 28 to 29 more horsepower and pound feet versus the previous CTS V, which you couldn't get with a six speed manual. This again offers a choice between a Tremex six speed manual like my tester or a 10 speed automatic transmission. That's two more gears versus the uh, previous generation CTS. Now, in terms of fuel economy, if you guys care, it's rated at 13 in the city and 21 on the highway. Now, ouch, this is required to run on premium gas. In today's $5 a gallon gas for premium, this is gonna be a very expensive car to live with if you are planning to daily drive it. Uh, but Cadillac says zero to 60 performance for this model here with the manual should be about 3.6 seconds, zero to 60, which is pretty good. Although it's about a second slower than most of the competitors because those vehicles have all wheel drive. If you guys want a faster CT5 V Blackwing, you wanna go for the 10 speed auto, which should shave 0.2 seconds off. We'll put this vehicle out to the test when we, when we strap it on our, to our equipment. However, it is a manual. It is somewhat tricky to launch. Top speed is around 205 miles an hour, which is very fast. And this vehicle, because it's, it's built off of the Alpha platform, it uses a lot of aluminum control componentry. It weighs in at just over 4,100 pounds. So it's not as, as terribly heavy as most of its competitors. Now closing the hood and taking a look at the styling, let's go ahead and see just how bright this blue looks in person. And let me tell you, this color, I was not expecting Cadillac to offer something like this on a more mature, like full on, you know, mid-size luxury sedan, but I love that they do so. I, I think the styling of this car really works, especially in the wider body uh, V configuration with this electric blue. You can see all CT5s have their latest design for headlights. You can see you've got that next generation art and science looks with art and science look with full LED low and high beams, LED daytime running light, LED turn signal. Uh, no fog lights on the vehicle, however, but you do have lots of functional vents. You can see the inner portion of the grill actually has these uh, looks like actual V's in the actual grill. This is again, all allowing for air to go in through that engine to feed that intercooler. It's gonna need plenty of cooling, functional vents here, functional vents here. My tester is missing the carbon fiber package, which would change out those black accents at the lower front skirt uh, to carbon fiber. That's like four to $6,000 extra. So it's gonna save you a ton of money if you don't go for that, but you are going to uh, have a little bit of a less aggressive look. Compared to the previous generation, the hood you can see has a little bit of bulging like there's a center bulge there for the engine. There are no more functional heat extractors. Cadillac tells us they, did, they didn't need to because they improved the cooling of the front fascia so much from the prior generation that it just didn't need the actual heat extractor vents. Looking around the side profile, you can see this is a midsize sedan with an overall length of 194.9 inches long. It's about an inch longer than the CT5V, the non-Blackwing model. Its wheelbase is around 116 inches long. So this is about the same length as a BMW 5 Series or Mercedes-Benz E-Class, but this is more priced along the lines of something like a BMW M3. So again, you get a supercharged V8 with a manual uh, versus a turbocharged six-cylinder in the BMW, but you can also get with a manual 
But again, this is more along the size of a BMW M5. Now looking at the wheels, you can see these are the standard uh, 19 inch wheels that you get with the five. You can also option in a different finish, like a gray finish or a black finish. Um, the tires are 275 35s in the front. These are Michelin Pilot Sport 4S tires. The brakes are also massive 16 inch rotors with six piston calipers. You can see the calipers are blue painted caliper, although they don't match the shade of blue as the car and it kind of annoys me. You can also get a black or a red painted caliper. Uh, I would personally go for the graphite gray wheels, uh, but you can see here, um, if you guys want to track this car a lot, they also offer a carbon ceramic brake option for $9,000. There's a lot of, again, wider bulging fender flares on this car uh, to give it more of that aggressive stance. It's surprisingly the same width of the car as the standard CT5 V at 80 inches. You can see the sunroof. My tester has the ultra view, ultra wide panoramic glass roof for another $1,400. It's kind of worth it. Uh, you cannot get this car with like a black roof option, I don't believe, but you can see looking at the rear, the styling looks really aggressive. I love the, the design of the rear taillights. It's a full LED design. You have the V logo there. Uh, you can also option in a carbon fiber package, which will again give you the larger carbon fiber wing. This is a little bit more subtle. And then the exhaust, you can see it's black tinted. Um, Cadillac says they wanted the exhaust to scare children. They certainly accomplished that. So I'll let you hear what it sounds like real quick. Yeah, this is basically gonna wake up your neighbors every time you start this vehicle up. Now, opening up the trunk compartment, you can see there's around 11.9 cubic feet of space in the trunk, which is not bad, but again, their seats do fold down in a 60-40 manner. Remember, there are vehicles that have slightly larger trunks, especially considering the size of this vehicle. I think the trunk is on the smaller side, but it's still pretty usable. There's no spare tire. Instead, you have a little bit of storage underneath there, uh, but overall, it's a usable back seat, and I'm glad that the uh, rear seats also still fold down flat. So let's talk about the interior of the CT5V Blackwing. Obviously the exterior looks great, especially in this electric blue. The first thing I'm gonna show you guys, however, is the key fob. Now you guys just heard it beep. Uh, this car does have a walk away lock feature where it'll beep or you can set it to not beep um, as you walk away from the vehicle and locks the car. Here's the key fob for the car. You can see it's also got a blue accent on it. The same color as the brake calipers. These are actually color matched to your brake calipers. So if you have a a black painted caliper or a red caliper this will be matched to that this is the current cadillac smart key system you can see it has the usual buttons to open and unlock it you can open up the trunk no remote start because obviously this is the manual transmission model but as you approach the door handle you can see there's actually a little led light here at night that lights up that helps you find the door handle and these handles actually don't move they're fixed in place instead there's a little pressure pad that you just push in and that will open the door for you. Now my tester for an extra $3,000 has the Skycool gray two-tone performance seats. Uh, these are not the full semi-aniline leather interior. That's like an extra $6,000, but you can see these seats are definitely one of my favorite looking performance seats. It even has the racing harness already uh, got the cutouts for that. So if you plan to actually track this car, it's basically ready for you. The seats, they adjust in like 16 different ways. They have very aggressive bolstering, obviously. They're also heated and ventilated and they just look fantastic. It goes really well, of course, with the rest of the interior. The door panel, you can see, has a soft touch injection molded plastic. There's some genuine carbon fiber here. Um, soft padded area over here with the contrasting red stitching. Windows are one touch for all four. These are the newer GM controls. They feel relatively high quality as well down here. It is hard touch plastic, and then you have a 16 speaker AKG premium audio system, which sounds good, but you should be listening to that exhaust system uh, versus the actual sound system a little bit more. Now getting inside, you can see it's got a low step in height, which is what I expect for a sedan. Getting inside and shutting the door, it has a nice solid sounding thunk. And then you can see uh, Cadillac made some slight tweaks to the interior for 2022. They're basically carried over on the V where you have two displays, a digital 12 inch display here and a 10 inch cluster over here. Uh, six speed manual, as you can see, Tremec, this is made by Tremec. And then the start stop button is right here behind the steering wheel. To start the vehicle up, you actually have to put your foot on the clutch and on the brake, you have to do both. I can't tell you how many times I was starting this vehicle up and didn't put my foot on the brake as well. Uh, but starting the car up, you can hear it. This is the car in tour mode. So the exhaust is kind of closed off. It's still pretty, it's still pretty damn loud. Um, if you push this V button here, you can hear it opens up and it changes the way the gauge cluster looks immediately. <laughs> that sound, my God, I'm going to 
hope I don't get a speeding ticket while I drive this car this week. Uh, but looking at the rest of this cabin, you can see uh, interior materials aren't, I would say, class leading, but they're certainly what I'd expect given this car's price range. There's just something about the design of this cabin that just doesn't look like a luxury car. It just doesn't look quite as impressive. Cadillac told me it's less showy, but I think that's kind of an excuse. I think that they could have gone a little bit more upscale, like just look at the Cadillac Escalade. That has a world-class interior. This just feels kind of like average interior. Now, obviously you do have the cut and sewn theme here with real leather along the dashboard here, real carbon fiber trim, some shiny uh, kind of piano black plastic, although it has more of like a glittery effect on it. You have a, a padded or leather stitched over the instrument panel hood. There's also a really nice heads up display. And then the steering wheel you can see is power, tilt and telescoping. Lots of buttons here for your heated wheel, for the cruise control, for the performance traction management, which they've moved to this little toggle here, which I love. It's so much easier to use versus the previous versions of it. Uh, steering wheel surprisingly not flat bottom, but I do love how thick the rim is. There's also a dedicated V button here that basically allows you to go into a V mode where you can customize that, or you can also change the mode here on the shifter where there's several different drive modes be from tour, sport, track, uh, and then there's a snow ice and then there's a my mode. So again, so many different drive modes are available on this car. It's very configurable, configurable, uh, which is what you expect in a vehicle with this price category. Now looking at the screen here, you can see there's your wireless Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. It works fairly well. The screen looks nice, although it's not quite as big and I wish it was kind of tilted forward toward me a little bit more. Uh, definitely would be nicer if it uh, tilted a little bit. And also some manufacturers are offering a widescreen display. You can see there's the uh, Cadillac infotainment system. It's got built-in factory navigation system, which is fine. Nothing super fancy, but it gets the job done. It's also very quick and easy to use. It's snappy. You're not gonna buy this car for the tech, but the tech is also pretty good. There, My tester has the $1,600 performance data recorder, which you can also use it as a dash cam. This will essentially record your lap times. You can also store it with your own SD card where you can insert via a slot right here, which is pretty cool. You can also adjust the heads up display over here. Um, Overall, this looks pretty good. It works well. And then if I put the vehicle into reverse, you can see there's your full top-down 360 camera uh, that my tester has. The resolution and quality and graphics look fine. You can also see your curb view, which is good because you don't want to be curbing those massive 19-inch wheels, although they are a little bit on the small side. Cadillac still uses a 19 because they don't want to have too much unsprung weight. Uh, the horn sounds pretty good. It sounds typical. It doesn't have like a puny sounding horn. And then my tester also has the digital camera rear view mirror, which I really like. You can also get rid of that and go for a regular rear view mirror if you prefer. Um, the seats also, I mentioned earlier, look fantastic, but they're also pretty comfortable and supportive. I love the way the center console looks here with your cup holders with some storage over here. The shifter, this Tremec six-speed, first of all, has a very heavy, short uh, travel clutch. It engages right toward the middle. And then you can see very satisfying clicks into each gear and then reverse is accessed by going all the way over to the left over here. Uh, you don't have to push down, you just kind of have to shove it all the way over to the, I'm sorry, to the right and then push it up. Um, over here on the center stack, you can see pretty decent amount of storage space, which is nice. Uh, the glove compartment you can see is a console or it's a bin style, it's stamped and it's lined with felt. Above me, there is some LED map lighting and then you can see my tester has the ultra view camera or ultra view sunroof for another $1,500 that let, let, lets in a lot of light. However, right now it's a hot day and the sun is beating down on me. So if you want to close that, you can close it off and you can see there's still some nice suede Alcantara on the roof. So overall, the interior isn't the most luxurious, isn't the most flashy, but it has a decent amount of room. It has decent tech in it. It also has a nice kind of driver focused feel and you also can't beat the fact that it has a manual. So yes, GM's interiors have always been kind of a sore point in the past. For me personally, it's just a personal taste thing. It's not class leading, but it's also not a terrible interior either. Checking out the back seat of the CT5V Blackwing, you can see because this is a mid-size sedan on the outside, you have about 37 inches of legroom back here, which is actually pretty decent. This is going to give you about three more inches of legroom versus something like an M3, but it's about the same legroom as an M5, uh, although I think the E63 has a little bit more space in this. But getting inside, you can see the door panel is the same as the front, soft touch, carbon fiber, nice leather stitching here, and then more Alcantara. You have the metal accented speakers for the AKG premium sound. As I get in and shut the door, you can see these sport seats are kind of sculpted so they don't take up your knee room, which is nice, but you do lose any kind of storage pocket here. None of the seats have that. You do have, thankfully, rear seat vents. You have one lonely USB-C charging port and a 12 volt power outlet. And you can see the rear seats, they don't really hug you as much, obviously, but at least Cadillac I did throw in an armrest here with a um that folds down with two cup holders and they, the seats also look pretty nice. Headroom is also pretty good. You can see the sunroof does take up a little bit of space, but they kind of sculpted it out here 
for taller folks. And at five foot seven, I can kind of get back here and get pretty comfortable. This is where I'd have it to drive. So if you're over six feet, you might find it to be a little bit tight. But again, this is still much larger than the competition, which Cadillac says is a step below this car in the size category. So it has been a few months since I got behind the wheel of the Ultimate Cadillac Sedan. Remember, this vehicle is a farewell nod to enthusiasts because after this generation of Blackwing vehicles, Cadillac is going, or Cadillac V is going completely electric because that's kind of the logical progression. So as you can see, this week we're driving the CT5 V Blackwing with the six-speed manual. I'm spending a whole week with the vehicle. Um, had a chance to drive it almost a year ago where I got to drive the automatic and the manual kind of back to back. Mostly I drove the automatic. So now we're with the manual and this car, let me tell you, is definitely in the wrong hands. It can be a scary vehicle if you don't know how to handle a powerful rear wheel drive car. Um, you don't know how to drive stick very well because the clutch is pretty heavy in this vehicle. It's, but at the same time, it's still built on the Alpha platform. It's got amazing amounts of grip. So this isn't as scary as like a Charger Hellcat, for example. Um, but regardless, it's still a relatively tricky vehicle uh, to launch if you guys are trying to figure out what the zero to 60 performance of this car is. But when you are ready to launch this car, GM makes it relatively easy. You basically put it into sport mode. You switch the traction management here into sport or dry or whichever one you want. The car does have launch control, which is gonna be tricky with a stick, but we'll see what we can get here with our timing equipment. <laughs> 3.95 seconds and that's with it going slightly uphill and uh, you can feel the back trying to put the power down we are riding on sticky 305 with tires so these tires definitely have a lot more grip than uh, some of the Pirelli competition and the fact that the Alpha platform in this car really does a fantastic job of being able to put the power down but it's still a relatively scary car to try to launch uh, but at the same time if you know how to handle a vehicle like this, it is still incredibly rewarding when you do get the launch right. The noise that this engine makes is just music to my ears. As an enthusiast, oh! <laughs> Woo -hoo -hoo -hoo. That sound is just batch crazy. You gotta love a Chevy small block or a GM small block V8, the LT4 is a fantastic engine. It's got all of the modern tech, even though it is a pushrod engine, we've got direct injection, we've got that big fat eaten blower at the top of this of the engine. It's just feeding in all that boost. There's just torque everywhere. Now, obviously I've driven faster vehicles that launch harder, uh, that simply just put the power down better, but none of them feel quite as light and as tossable as this Caddy. And that's what I think is so surprising about this car is it feels incredibly responsive and also grippy. <laughs> this thing will put some hair on your chest. It's kind of scary to launch, honestly, at times. But if you get it right and you uh, learn to trust the car, which takes some time, I've, I've learned to, t to trust the car a little bit after my week's worth of driving. It is such a rewarding experience. I mean, really, the only downside is you're not going to be able to get away from those quick Teslas or those quick quick accelerating EVs of the light quite as well, but you are gonna be still having a ton of fun and the pain at the pump, especially with gas prices right now, gas prices are well over five bucks a gallon for premium. And this car costs like $80 to fill up, which is just stupid expensive. Oh God. <laughs> oh my God, what a joy. This thing is just, puts a smile on my face. And you know what, it's so refreshing to be able to drive something like this in 2022. You have to give Cadillac props for having the balls to build something like this. I mean, yes, they could have given this car all wheel drive to make it faster. Obviously, if you want it to be a little bit quicker, you can get it with the 10 speed auto, which is a good transmission. But as an enthusiast, I, I, I have lots of great things to say about this Tremec six speed. The throws on it are just really satisfyingly short. The active rev matching also is good. Listen to that exhaust. Cadillac wanted it to scare small children and that it does. It even rev matches as you go into first. Just listen to that burble and that crack. Oh, every time you go near the throttle, you can hear the supercharger whine. You can feel the back end wanting to step out. Although it doesn't step out as scarily as I thought it would. I mean, when I first drove this car last year at the track, I was out at VIR and that was 
palm sweaty. That was anxiety inducing at times. That track was so crazy in this car. I mean, I think I actually ended up preferring the CT4 V Blackwing. <laughs> Even in second gear, you can feel the back end stepping out a little bit. It's just so freaking insane. I'm in love. I'm in love with this car. If I was looking for something like this, this would make it to the very top of my list. And if I was comparing it to a BMW M5, uh, Mercedes AMG E63, Tesla Model S, obviously all of those cars are faster, but I'd argue that you'd still have a ton of fun in this car and you're also getting something that's special. This is a car that's gonna become a collector's item because of just how good it is and how special it feels. Now granted, the interior of the CT5V Blackwing GM made some, Cadillacs made some improvements to it. I do like the updated infotainment screen. The fully digital cluster also looks good. There's some things about this interior that still feel a little bit too, I think, unsavory for a car that can cost $100,000. Now, this one here is not that expensive, um, but it is still pretty expensive if you think about it. And remember, this car starts at like uh, low 40s to mid 40s for the base version. But let's go ahead and see what we can do one more time or try launching it. It's still in sport mode with the traction management on. Oh, 3.92 again. So I actually got 3.7 when I first tested this car out and I'm just having trouble launching it cleanly in these areas for some reason. But still, that's the thing about a manual is you have to get the launch right. Otherwise it's not gonna always get it done perfectly, but still, 3.9 is nothing to sneeze at. And again, if you want something faster, the automatic's gonna give that to you. But just remember, you're gonna be missing out on the manual's just directiveness. It's so much fun to drive this car quickly. It also handles well. The steering is amazing. The seats are comfortable. The ride quality also isn't bad. I'm surprised at how good the ride quality is in something like this. Uh, it's got those Magno Rheological dampers and it does a good job. Fuel economy, however, is abysmal. I've been averaging 13.6 miles to the gallon in my week's worth of testing. On the highway, it does about 18. So yes, horrible gas mileage, but you knew that. You're gonna be paying to play with this big old honking V8. But wow, is it satisfying, super satisfying. And I have to say, it is a joy to drive this car for the last week. And I'll be curious to see what Cadillac's V series ends up doing for the next generation, but for now, this is basically the sayonara to the gas-powered V8, and the fact that they're offering it with a stick just makes Cadillac that much more respect. Like, I have so much more respect for them uh, as an enthusiast-minded brand versus how I looked at them, like, just a couple of years ago. So when I first got a chance to drive this car late last year, I was simply blown away by the entire package. I mean, yes, the CT5V Blackwing is not gonna be the quickest accelerating sports sedan in a straight line, but I'd argue that it's going to be one of the most fun that you can have in the corners. That six-speed manual transmission is just the perfect partner for this 6.2 liter V8. Even though the rear-wheel drive dynamics does have trouble putting the power down at times, I've driven far messier uh, high horsepower rear-wheel drive muscle cars. The Dodge Charger Hellcat comes to mind. Really what Cadillac has, is offering here is a final sayonara. I can't say that enough to a manual transmission with a V8 because we know that the V uh, Performance Series is going to be going full electric for the next generation models. So basically what that means is pick one of these up while you can because it's an incredible daily driver. It still has a comfortable enough ride quality to use on a daily basis. The interior has far greater tech versus the previous CTS uh, V with better infotainment systems, very comfortable seats, a really decent look to the interior, although it's not personally my cup of tea, although I really like this particular one here, the way it's optioned out in the electric blue with the sky cool gray two-tone interior. That's like an extra $3,000 upcharge. The back seat has plenty of room. The trunk is a little on the small side for a vehicle this big, but it is a still a very usable trunk. And really what makes the CT5V so appealing is the fact that Cadillac has priced it in line with a BMW M3. This is the size of a BMW M5, but it starts at just under $84,000 for the base version. Now my tester is surprisingly lightly optioned aside from the upgraded interior, the red seat belts, this electric blue color, um, and the performance data recorder for like $1,600. This one here comes to just over $91,000. So 91 grand is literally the same price as a well-equipped BMW M3. And unlike the BMW, which has like 479 horsepower with the manual, this has again, 668. And it has that amazing V8 sound that will literally scare your neighbors and scare small children. 
Obviously, if you guys get the automatic and you really option this up with all the carbon fiber and the carbon ceramic, ceramic brakes, this can be well over $100,000. But keep in mind, cars that are the same size of this vehicle, of course, with all-wheel drive, easily are around 130 grand. So if you look at it that way, this car is kind of a bargain, which is why when Cadillac first offered this late last year, it essentially sold out all their pre-orders and the uh, launch edition models. But if you are looking to find one of these, they still are on dealer lots. If you can find them, I'm assuming that a lot of dealers, unfortunately, because of the market, are going to be asking hefty premiums for it. But I'd argue that if you guys manage to get your hands on this, it'll become an instant collector's item. So it should easily make it to the very top of your list if you're looking for a V8 manual rear-wheel drive performance luxury sedan. But with all that said, hope you guys have enjoyed my full overview on the brand new 2022 Cadillac CT5B Blackwing. If you're also looking to see the latest cars I'm testing, be sure to follow me on Instagram at redline underscore reviews, like us on Facebook, and as always, guys, please keep subscribing to the Redline Reviews YouTube channel for all the latest reviews. Thank you so much for watching. I'll catch you all in the next video.